Hello and welcome to 5-Year Club video number 238. Uh, for this video I just thought it'd be interesting to go over, uh, ooh, I don't have my light on, I'm even creepier than normal. And that light will take a little while to warm up. Anyway, I thought it would be interesting to go over uh, the cost of attending Burning Man for me this year. Um, in part just to discuss the cost of vacations in general and in part um, to see kind of like what expenditures on this particular trip um, or total like luxury above and beyond and what is kind of like the baseline and um, and what are what are your options when going on this kind of weird camping type trip all right well let's just look at it at a high level first uh, the total spent for me is around 1745 and uh, 750 of that is stuff that I did not need to spend it was stuff that I bought on Amazon um, mainly on Amazon, but other places too, and we'll discuss that in a second. And um, then the other $1,000 was, uh, number one, my ticket, which was over half of that, you know, so that's $500 on the ticket. Tickets used to be like 220 but they've gone up in cost dramatically over the years, um, mainly because the the state Nevada and the local state agencies are trying to milk the event for as much money as they can um, so that's half of it the ticket price the other half is going to be transportation so the truck to get out there and uh, the trailer to get out there and the gas that's required to power those uh, food and alcohol so all the food and alcohol that I drank or didn't drink that week I didn't drink very much this year and um, kitchen and cleaning supplies. It's a very dusty desert. And so there are certain things like Ziploc bags, um, aluminum foil, Lysol wipes, uh, sanitary food prep gloves um, that you use more of than you would normally because you don't have access to a sink. And evaporating gray water is annoying, so you don't want to do that either. And since you don't have a fridge, if you want cold food, if you want perishable food during the first part of the week, you need to buy ice. And the ice there is not the cheapest ice on earth because it has to be transported to a desert first. Uh, so you do end up spending a bit of money on ice. Um, let's go. Let's see if I can point, point to these so you can see kind of what's going on. No, my mouse is not appearing. Now my mouse is appearing. Okay, good. I can see it. All right. So... Uh, the ticket is $514, and I have to pay that all myself. However, the uh, transportation cost, food and alcohol, kitchen and cleaning stuff, and ice, that was all split between five people. And certainly uh, having five people to share those resources is a big reason why the cost goes down to only $500 for all those things. If you come with fewer people uh, sharing expenses, uh, if you come as a solo person, you're either going to go down in quality a lot on the food uh, and, and maybe, you know, the ice, you, you're going to have fewer coolers. Um, but it's, uh, it's also going to be a rougher, it's going to be a rougher ride. So I would suggest that people go on, go to Burning Man with a group. It just makes everything easier, more cost efficient. Uh, and, and just people are awesome. So why would you want to go alone? I mean, if you did, if you did go alone, you could probably meet people. Like, there's plenty of friendly people there, but uh, it's not necessary. Anyway, um, yeah. So basically, it's like a thousand dollars on all the stuff that you really want to go to the event to enjoy yourself, and then for me, it was like seven hundred fifty dollars just on stuff that I wanted. It was not stuff that I needed at all. Let's go and look at that stuff uh, for me. So by far the biggest part of that $750 was uh, making absinthe. So it turns out it's pretty expensive to make absinthe, especially when you're not doing it uh, as part of any kind of efficient operation. So I had to spend about $200 on Everclear, and then I had to spend around $150 on herbs, and then I had to spend, well I didn't have to spend, but I did spend, um, another $50, and probably a little bit more actually on glassware, to help me uh, filter this stuff faster and to help me uh, hold the liquid as it was infusing um, the wormwood anise and fennel for the absinthe. So I actually probably underestimated that absinthe cost. It was probably 450, but whatever. 
you know, we're, uh, yeah, 804, and then we can go up here and change this one, yeah, yeah, it changes slightly, okay, um, all right, so that was the absinthe, puzzles, I like these, like, physical puzzles, I like messing with them, I also find, actually, that, like, see, they, like, you're supposed to disassemble them, that's the, that's the point, is that they're this weird metal thingy and they move different ways and you have to figure out the trick to disassemble them. And they are very tricky, some of them anyway. Um, I, I love them. I love just like sitting around messing with them. And then I also find that certain other people, especially nerds, really love messing with them, introverts. So for me, this is kind of like a dual, like I personally enjoy it, but also it's just like a fun thing to share with other people when you're sitting around talking about stuff. Um, I spent about $94 on silly costume stuff, spent roughly $40, I don't really remember, on the ingredients to make uh, some rum cakes. Uh, I spent $38 on two extra drill batteries that I bought out of paranoia, because I have to set up this dome, and if I don't have power for my electric drills, it is a big pain in the ass. And since I only use these drills once a year, I get paranoid that the rechargeable batteries have gone dead. So I bought two extra rechargeable batteries this year just out of paranoia that like all my old ones were dead and because I hadn't used them in two years. And it turns out they weren't dead and I never used the new batteries, but I also did not keep the packaging, so I could not return them, which was stupid, stupid, stupid. Because now I have like 10 drill batteries. Who needs that? Um, so now I need a hobby that uses drills a lot. Anyway, um, yeah, so that was definitely an emotional purchase. I bought some uh, LED lanterns, which are decreasing in price and increasing in quality over time. Um, and so now I've got, I own, how many LED lanterns? Probably around five or six. I think I own six. And that's a good amount. I don't think I need any more for next year. But over the years, if you do this camping stuff over and over again, you tend to build up kind of like a, a camping hoard, which is really cool because the next time you go camping, you got everything. You don't have to spend additional money. That's one reason why the uh, miscellaneous category is so small uh, for the campus because a huge amount of stuff that you would spend on your first year at Burning Man, I already have, you know, sitting in a locked closet. Do to do uh, bike chains because my bike chains rust every year because I'm too lazy to like service them after the event. So just repurchase bike chains every year. Uh, that was, you know, 1755 bungees to tie down uh, boxes on the truck. Um, I just kind of felt in my soul that we probably needed more bungees. We also were going to have a few more things on the truck this year because there were more people going. So I picked up an extra thing of bungees. That was definitely worth it. We had no bungee problems, but we did use, like, we didn't have too many bungees. So the bungees was a decent purchase. And finally, I needed a new water bottle because I've been using my water bottle with protein powder for a while. It's nasty, and I just wanted one that was plain clear water. So yeah, apparently about $800 worth of stuff that, strictly speaking, I did not need to buy. You know, the absinthe is really for other people. I'm like, you know, letting other people drink that the whole week. Rum cakes are for other people. Those were actually really well received. So well received, in fact, that it'd probably be better for me to make nothing but rum cakes next year rather than my absinthe because everyone thinks my absinthe is nasty. And that's fine. I, I thought it was cool. I had one flavor this year that was like sweet flavor, bitter flavor, and then your lips tingle because it's Szechuan peppercorn. And that just, that amused me a lot, um, that experience. Uh, so yeah, for me this year, Burning Man, it's about $1,800. And only about a thousand of that was necessary. But obviously, uh, you know, this was my 10th year. A lot of the camping related stuff, just off the top of my head, um, cooking stoves, Actually, um, I, I have like 10 canisters of unused propane now. Um, the dome itself, tarps for the dome, uh, the tent that I sleep in, a tarp to be under the tent, a cot to sleep on, uh, my sleeping bag. I had a, a separate sleeping bag just out of paranoia. Um, other costumes from previous years, camping chairs. Uh, I don't remember if I mentioned the camping table. Um, I already mentioned the cooking stoves, definitely. I actually have a propane lantern, which I think is really cool, but we didn't end up using it this year. And, and then a ton of black and yellow boxes, the bungees, the bungees to hold down the tarps on the dome. Um, some random, like, what are called EL wire. They're like neon lights that are in this, uh, uh, plastic 
string stuff. And what else is expensive? A little boom box. That was like a hundred bucks a few years ago to play music in the dome. Um, we bought batteries this year, but then we returned them because it, we didn't actually need them. We had enough old batteries to power everything. And a few trail chairs. I mean, yeah, I don't know, some old bags to hold my clothing. Um, an old dusty camera that I bought for about a hundred bucks uh, years ago. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, I would say that like you can conservatively just add like a thousand dollars to your first Burning Man year for camping supplies, and then um, every year after that is going to be that much cheaper because you can reuse that stuff over and over again. Um, but overall, I would say you know what, it's not a terribly expensive uh, vacation. Uh, you could definitely do it for two thousand dollars if you're brand new, one thousand dollars. If you are um, going again, and maybe fifteen hundred dollars if you are, you know, if you can convince like a relative to give you their old used tent, you know, fifteen hundred dollars if you camp with other people and you're really trying to go frugal on the camping supplies, um, I think yeah, you should be able to achieve that if you're sharing uh, a camping spot with some people, which I totally would encourage on people's first year. I would say definitely try to find an exi an existing camp and camp with them rather than solo camping. Um, I did solo camping my first year, and you can totally do it, and you can totally have a good time doing it. It's just more fun with people, so, yeah. All right, well, yeah, well, I think that's just it for video number 238. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this rundown, and you kind of have an idea now about, um, the cost of Burning Man for people returning, the ticket price versus transportation versus food and alcohol versus all the little miscellaneous things you might want to buy. Have a fabulous evening.